Hi guys, Scott here, and welcome to another episode of the Balkan bush trip that we're doing in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you've not seen any of the previous episodes, I suggest you go and check those out. We've had some rather nice trips. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want more content as well. Now, in the first one, we set out from Rijeka, and we went to this farmer's field, is all I can describe it of, in Otterchak. We then left Otterchak in the second episode and went to Zemunik, which was a rather nice uh, approach near the uh, the Adriatic. And then we took off out of there and we went to Castella. And this was quite a hilly trip that we had. Uh, and it was full of history as well. It was really good. In this one, we're going to take off from Castella. And we're going to uh, this place here, which looks like a grass runway next to a small town. Uh, the town of Singe. So let's hope we don't get burned. Ha ha ha. Uh, this is going to be a short flight, actually. 20 nautical miles, 10 minutes. So this is not going to be a long episode. And then after that, we're back to the 30 minute trips. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's spawn on the runway in Castella, and uh, we'll see if we can make our way over to Singe. Right, so here we are on the runway. Uh, barometric pressure is fixed, so don't need to worry about that. And just having a look up here, it says, um, let's see, Jadro, it says, Take flight from Split Airport, which is where we are. Head east along the coastline of Kastelaniski Zaljev, past the peninsula town of Vran Vranjik. Nicknamed Little Venice because of its sheer beauty. So this is going to be one to look for. Uh, watch for an inlet on the coast where the Jadro River feeds into a bay by a train yard. Right, so this is initially a heading of 090. Uh, and then we're going to track about 7.8 nautical miles for 3 minutes 46. So what I'm thinking I'll do is we are heading on runway 23 by the look of it. So if we take off on 23 and there's a hill there, if we climb and then loop back do a climbing turn and then as soon as we get overhead back on the field we shall head east so we'll, we'll bug for uh, east which is going to be zero nine zero we'll bug for that and then as soon as we pass overhead we'll start a timer uh, we'll, we'll just go for 2,000 feet initially so I'll put the heading mode on and I'll put v-speed mode on with a climb of about 600 feet a minute should do it um, not got any flaps in check the trim trim set for takeoff mixture is rich so that's good um and instrument lighting i don't know if i'll we'll need it we'll, we'll bring a bit more in just in case uh pito heat what's the outside air temperature 14 celsius so we better put the pito heat on don't need any of that stuff landing lights are all set okay Let's do it. Let's take off. Let's collapse that out of the way. Let's take off and then we'll loop back and climb overhead. We'll move that as well. So release the parking brake. Full throttle. Push slightly forward on the yoke. Air speed's building nicely. 50, there's 60, 65, release the back pressure and it will just come up on its own. There we go. And we'll trim for about 80 knots. Try and hold runway heading reasonably. And we'll just let it climb up. I'm going to have to get clear enough for these hills. They're actually a little bit higher than I thought they would be. So maybe we'll just straight ahead climb for a minute until we get some altitude because we can't really turn yet. Looking at that. Just hold the 80. I'm thinking maybe a thousand feet we should be able to make this. Completing a bus trip without using the get me back on track. Oh my god, every time. Every time it tells you that. You think by the leg four you would actually know this to click it to get rid of it go away get the middle marker noise I'm still not comfortable turning just yet I think I think what's going on is it thinks that we're actually a bit lost I think that's what's going on. So it's kind of saying, you look a bit lost. I, you know, do bear in mind if you use the get me back on track feature. 
I think that's what it's doing. Okay. That's good. Nice. Now I've got the altitude we need. And now we're about to head into the sun. There we go. There's the field. Let's just keep the climb going for a second. Just get the timer ready. Not quite overhead yet, so I don't want to start it, but we're almost on the track that we need to be on. I'll put the autopilot in now. It should pitch us up, bring us up to 2000. And then we're now flying the heading bug, which is east. And we're almost overhead. So we're looking for 3 minutes 46 in an easterly track and make that smaller. We don't need to see all of this. No, we can't make it smaller. Make it bigger, but we can't make it smaller. Anyway, start the timer. We're overhead. Take a flight from Split Airport, head east along the coastline. We'll just back the RPMs off. Just want to bring that into the green arc there. There we go. Nice cruise power. Um, past the peninsula town of Varan Varanik. So I'm. I presume this is not Varanik. I presume this is the original um, town of. What was it? Jadro or something? Uh, past the peninsula town of Varanik named Little Venice because of its sheer beauty. Watch for an inlet on the coast where the Jadro River feeds into a bay by a train yard. So. There is an inlet here. We're going to be looking for a bay and a train yard and a river. So that should be reasonably simple to spot. Now, when we get there, we need to look at the next step. When we get there, 047 will be the heading. So that's going to take us in that direction. It says follow the state road, uh, D1, leading northeast into the mountains as it loops its way past the remains of medieval Cliss Fortress and through the mountain pass, eventually it will lead you north to a lounge roundabout. It's not clear at this stage if we're going to actually need to climb or not. Um, I don't know if, they, if we're going to have to climb over this. I'm kind of thinking it'll take us through the valley there. So we'll just make sure we stay on track for now. If we need to go over this thing, uh, we may need to climb a little bit. We're on one, 1 minute 45. We need to start if I just look over the top here. So we can see some docks and things here. We're looking for a, a bay by a train yard, is what we're looking for. It's a big marina. Thinking it's this bay here. see a train line yet. Unless... Oh, there you go. There's, there's a train. There's a train station there, so that must be the train line. So, maybe this... That's definitely a train line, so maybe this is the train... Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's a big cargo thing on the bay. Perfect. That's what it was referring to. So when we get there, that will be about 3 minutes 46, so that'll be about right. So the Jadro River is going that way, I think. Actually, no, it's going that way. Yeah, it kind of goes... It's hard to tell on the, on the map at the moment. Assuming that's a Jadro River kind of go straight into the mountain though. Uh, so at 3 minutes 46 we're going to be turning on a heading of 047. We're slightly off the track at the moment if you look. Let's 
to see if we can push ourselves on track. We're coming up on the time. So we'll probably want to turn very shortly, but I think the station was about here if I remember. Okay, 047, let's stop that and reset it. And we'll go left. Heading of 047 and we'll start the timer again. Now follow the state road northeast into the mountains that loops its way past the remains of medieval Cliffs Fortress and through the mountain pass. Eventually it will lead you north to a large roundabout. So we've got a 2 minute 39 track on a state road. And we're looking for a roundabout unless that's a state road there. That could be it. It's quite a big road, isn't it? Let's assume that's the state road. And if it is the state road, it will go through here and I can see something here. I don't know if that might be the roundabout. Medieval Cliffs Fortress, I didn't see that. Okay, we should make this. Should be a little bit higher, but we'll be fine, I think. roundabout we're looking for, that's the question. That's not it. There must be something in the distance there. Let's turn a few degrees to the right. I, th I think this this has got to be the state road, it has to be. I don't know where the fortress is, if I'm honest. slightly to the right. Uh, now let's see what comes after that. Eventually you're not all roundabout and then we'll be turning on a 030 so that's taken us, you know what, I think I'm going to climb because I've got a feeling it's about to take us over these hills and I want to be a little bit higher for that. performance going. Don't see a roundabout yet. But that's a state oh there's a roundabout. Right below us is a massive roundabout. And that would tie up roughly with the timings I think. So then we wanna stop that, reset and heading 030. About right. Yeah, good job we climbed, eh? <laughs> right, 030, uh, stay with the road as it curves around the hillside ahead. Okay, can't see it yet. But I can see on the sat-nav there's a state road, I think, which is going around the hillside. Let lead you north through an open green plain before twisting its way around more hills and pathing towards the large town of Singe, situated on a fertile cast karstic field in the area known as, yeah, okay, Cargina. This is your next stop. Look for a grass airstrip on the eastern outskirts of the town. Right. Let's get the mixture back a little bit. There we go. So that's the state road below us, look. And it is indeed curving around. As predicted. The time we're looking. Oh, I forgot to start the timer. No, I thought I'd started it. All right, so that's probably at least a minute and a half behind, I reckon. Honestly, thought I'd started that. Um, we're looking for three minutes forty-two, so I reckon we've got about two minutes left. So we're going to have to start looking for this uh, airfield. We're going to come down to uh, twenty-five hundred. State Road is this one here, I think. Tracking that way. 
And from the picture, let's have a look at the picture again. We're looking for a lot of stripy fields and then this thing smack in the middle of it. There's a town ahead here. It said it was on the eastern side, which puts it on east is over here. So maybe they look like the right kind of fields. I'm thinking it's going to be here somewhere. I suppose it's only on the, on the uh, sat nav. LDSS. It is indeed on the sat nav. We should be tracking right towards it. I think that might be it, though. Right, let's bring the altitude down again. My best guess is that it's here somewhere. There's a town. Oh, I'm looking at right it. Uh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Right there. Okay. Let's cancel the autopilot. It said it was on the eastern side of the town, which is true. Because that's the town there. They didn't show you that that running track. That would have made it a lot easier. It would also be useful if I knew what the elevation of the field was. Okay, we're at 1700... First stage of flaps coming in. There's 80. Okay, let's turn in. get the second stage of flaps in. Very low. It's funny when you turn, suddenly the airfield disappears into the uh, into the field. I sort of turned and looked around and went, wait, where's the runway gone? <laughs> the, the grass just completely disappeared. But we're here, that's the main thing. Things that look so clear at like 1,500, 2,000 feet, when you get down to like 500, suddenly meld into the uh, background. Way two six. And we're down. Somebody needs to come and cut the grass on this runway, blimey. Right, we're here. Parking brake on. That should trigger it. There we go. Leg complete. So the most difficult part of that, I mean, it was quite a good journey. Like, following the road and stuff was quite straightforward. The most difficult part of that was actually the airfield itself. You would have thought, looking at this picture, that it was super, super clear. But because of the light, I think when we came in from this side, and I clocked it straight away, but when you turn, it's not lit like this anymore. This, this field just disappeared into the grass. But anyway, that's that one done. Uh, that was what LDSP to LDSS, uh, Castella to Singe. That's leg four. So the next one will be leg five. So that's it for this video, guys. 
Hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Take care. To the next one. Happy flying.